Good afternoon and welcome to Bungalow 5 and our 2020 collection. We have a very special time for you today. We're going to be joined by the head of design for Bungalow 5, Luca Renzi. My name is Tyler Schwetman and I'm going to be your host for the next 20-30 minutes, but I want to introduce Luca. Hi Luca. Hello Tyler, how are you? I am well. How's everything in New York City? Um, things are well with me. I know that it's a complicated time for many people, and um, we don't want to minimize that. But um, you know, luckily, uh, I'm healthy, as are the rest of the people working at Bungalow 5. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that update. I know we uh, have some really nice pieces for our 2020 collection, and we wanted to take this opportunity to share them with you. So, Luco, I'm going to let you take us on this tour. I'd like to start with our Morris collection, which is the first up today. I think the Morris Collection is special. Not only is it relevant um, because of uh, the COVID-19 working at home kind of deal, which is happening with many people. So this includes a really very beautiful desk, um, as well as a relatively formal chest of drawers here. It's interesting because our homes have not only become a classroom, but they've also become our, a, a workspace, our office, and a sanctuary. So a desk is very important. True. I want to point out some of the special details on this collection. Our head designer, Marina Lenina, uh, designed it to be a really very formal, almost direct to our French piece, but by adding interesting veneers to it, um, as well as the champagne metal, we've made it more modern and a bit more accessible for the way that people live today, and a little bit unexpected. Right. And let me ask you a question. We uh, have a viewer that wrote in and they wanted to know, this is a Mark from St. Louis, wanted to know what colors have inspired you during this whole, uh, you know, COVID time? Well, I think the colors that are, have inspired me for this particular collection is this really very beautiful blonde, um, you know, straight grain oak veneer, as well as this very interesting taupe veneer. I think that these are really very accessible, very calming. And I think that they lend a bit of luxury, um, you know, and allow this to be formal without being overly, overly dressy. Oh, it's really lovely. What chair would you pair with this desk? In this particular photo, we chose a lacquer chair, but I'd like to let people know that you don't need to match a chair to a desk, just like you don't need to match, say, your pants to your shirt exactly. You're not going to you know, be monochrome all the time. I think that you know, when people are looking for chairs to pair with desks or even dining tables, I think that, uh, you know, people should try and be as creative as they can and, and think about using, say, fully upholstered chairs or, you know, a chair in a myriad of different lacquer colors or even wood species that don't necessarily, that aren't necessarily the same. I mean, there's absolutely no problem with, say, using a black oak chair with this, with this or even a, a blonde oak chair. It all works. Mm -hmm. Well, being from Texas, we definitely like to uh, utilize hair, hair on hide, if you will. And so the Andre collection has been introduced and it's really quite lovely. I think the lines are very special. And tell me the inspiration behind this collection. Well, this is a really very deco traditional piece. You know, once again, I'm going to mention, um, you know, our head of design, Marina, is really very inspired by things from the 20s and 30s. I think that's probably... Um, where she lives mentally, uh, or stylistically a lot of the time, <laughs> mentally. And so a lot of our pieces have that really very strong sort of traditional bend. And what we do is she tends to then, uh, you know, tweak some of the, the attributes and, and then we dress it up with say, you know, an unexpected material. So in this case, we put the hair on hide on what would be, you know, a very traditional deco piece. And then also by adding this metal around here that also gives it just you know that touch of glamour yeah it is really it's really quite lovely um i know that there are pieces in this collection that can lend themselves to be bedside tables or can be used as entertainment like the the julius that you're showing us right now it has a really nice movement and it's very dramatic um tell us about how you see this piece yeah you know, i see this piece I, I think the most obvious use of this piece would say be um, you know, a bedside table because it's it's pretty hefty. It's about 36 inches wide. Um, you know, it's, it's the right height. 
And also there's this space here um, where you could, you know, put a mobile phone or even a charger. There's a grommet back here. I'm not sure if you can see that, which allows you to sort of thread that wiring through uh, in a really very neat and clean way. Um, but also this can be used as an end table, say, um, you know, at the end of a sofa in between two chairs or as a small entertainment center. And say, say you had a, a, a corner in a room where you wanted to have a, a television on top of something. This could be perfect for that. Right. And I know, you know, being from Texas too, we like our saloons and bars and I love the, the Florian bar. You know, we, you and I have talked about this multiple times and <laughs> particularly fond of the, you know, using the metal and the hair and hide. Uh, and I love the drama of the, the handles, the hardware, the pull. It's very, gives us a very grand entrance into the bar. What was the inspiration for this design? I think the handle gives a grand entrance into the bar without being fussy. Um, you know, when our designer was conceiving this, she actually came up with, uh, you know, as she does, with tons of different handle choices and options. And um, I think she wanted something that wasn't gonna be, uh, you know, overly flashy, but still have a, uh, you know, be glamorous. And I think she was successful <laughs> with this one, very successful. If you look at this, it's a really very cons a well considered handle. The curvature of the handle actually echoes the curvature of the case. Um, so it, it gives it a, a bit of a, a softness. Another thing I want to point out about this piece in particular is that, you know, if you look at the upper portion, the part above the leg, it's really very blocky. But by adding those curves to the front, she minimizes that. And then also by putting this so high up and having so much negative space underneath it, it gives it a very uh, a light, it gives it a lightness and an airiness and doesn't feel like it's taking too much room in your room. Mm -hmm. Speaking of rooms, I see this used in many different rooms, whether it's a den or a living room. And I know you've kind of joked with me a little bit about, I also see this in a dressing closet. Yes, and, and I think that my, my question is, what would you be doing this with in a dressing closet? Well, you one say, needs storing... a little <laughs> What? One needs a little toddy when they're getting ready to go out to party. But would you also say store like earrings in the drawers or do something like that? Or would you just be drinking in your, in your dressing room? I'm just curious. I, I think you could be drinking and rifling through your jewels all at the I same see. time. <laughs> well, speaking of a bar, there always has to be a bar stool and or a counter stool. And our Beltar uh, stool is, you know, carries the theme with the height on hair. I know this is a very substantial piece because we do have it in the showroom in Dallas. So look at, give us a little idea of why this stool and why, you know, the, the dimensions and the scale of everything. Okay, this piece, well, that's a sort of a multi-part question. This piece would normally probably be seen in something that would be like all stainless steel or all brass and be kind of shocking and really very flashy. And I like flash as much as the next person, but we wanted to make this much more organic, uh, much softer and, um, you know, much more, I don't know, transitional or something. And so what we chose to do is cover the majority of this in hair on hide and not just any hair on hide. We didn't go for that Southwestern feel, which you, you quite often see in bars, but decided to keep it with that really very sophisticated gray uh, muted hair on hide. And then, um, you know, down at the bottom here where, where the uh, support is, we added a stainless steel element, which kind of disappears with that, that gray hair on hide. Right. I know we have a question and Mark from Texas wants to know the durability of the hair on hide. Well, you know, I think that it was you and one of my trips to Texas who told me that cows live on a field in the rain. And that's true. Um, uh, of course, we don't recommend throwing buckets of water on these pieces, but they are <laughs> durable and they will put up with any sort of normal residential wear and tear. Also, I'm going to go back here because I'm going to show you that, you know, a lot of these pieces do come with the options of glass tops. So you can purchase a glass top to put on top if you're worried about say a, a glass of red wine being put onto the top of one of your hair on hide pieces. Well, I think we shared that red wine is not a, uh, a friend of bungalow five pieces, whether it's our grass cloth <laughs> or hair on hide. Um, yes, as we true. continue on with the um, hair on hide collection, we have the Mondrian and it is a, a very a patchwork 
you know, kind of pattern. Tell me about that. Well, Mondrian was really very famous for his grids, you know, in his later work. I think the stereotypical Mondrian painting would be, say, you know, black, a black grid that then has primary colors like red, yellow, and blue um, with a lot of white negative space. Oh, we took that a little bit further and made a 50 shades of gray version of a Mondrian grid. And, you know, to make this piece even more interesting, you know, since it is natural hair on hide, that natural hair on hide also has a slight gradient with it. So mm -hmm. it gives it a really very tactile and very artisanal look you know, but done by mother nature. <laughs> yes, and I love the depth and the scale of it. Um, yeah. You know, in typical Bungalow 5, you know, fashion, we try to stick with, you know, traditional pieces, but with a new twist on them. So our Lauren collection, um, you know, comes in three different color waves, finishes, and, but you have uh, placed a really interesting detail on a, an old classic. Share that with us. Yes. Before I advance to the next page, I first want to just point out the different finishes here. It might be a little bit difficult to see in this photograph, so I will go to the next one and show that this is actually a really very heavy linen, because we do do some things in a, a very light linen, but this is a, a very heavy linen with a lot of texture, which gives us an almost organic adobe feeling or look. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to talk about the way that the metal detail is handled instead of putting sharp corners uh, by adding metal to the tops and sides and then coming to a point at the very end, which could snag your hose or, I don't know, hit your hip or like rip your shirt or whatever as you're running by, this is actually, everything's actually canted on a 45 degree angle. And then, uh, um, you know, the metal meets up in this really very beautiful uh, detail here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm going to skip over here and show this here because you can see the linen a little bit better. And um, one of the things that I think is particularly beautiful about this mm -hmm. is if you look and see how the light hits the, the metal, because the metal is at 45 degrees, it, these pieces almost look like they're glowing in a room. And this metal, it's a brushed brass, not a polished brass. So that also, that sort of mutes the reflection and it gives it this almost, you know, very subtle electrified look. Yeah, and you used the Jerome stool not only in the console uh, photo, but we've also used it in this kind of formal living room setting. I mean, that's a very mid-century modern piece. What, you know, I know that as a creative mind, you know, you see things going together. I think that, um, you know, the reason why we put this Jerome stool here is we thought that it picked up that brass, that beautiful brass element. I think that sometimes, you know, oak, can be a proxy for gold or brass. I think that people are too afraid to mix things. I think the obvious choice would be to put, say, a white stool here, or even a pink upholstered piece, or something in between. But I think, you know, mixing in that, that uh, organic, uh, really beautiful wood element uh, you know, gives this uh, room a bit of a informality that it needs. I mean, this looks like somebody coming home and having something fun to drink with, uh, you know, two other friends. I could imagine, you know, if I wore heels, kicking them off and you know, <laughs> enjoying a drink there. Absolutely. Well, and speaking of wood, our, we introduced this this morning on our website on bungalow5.com. This is the Michelle collection. And you, I know you've referenced, you know, very architectural. You know, tell us about, we want to know about the wood, and then I also want to know about the architectural styling of this. Well, we'll first start with the architectural reference. Um, once again, our designer Marina um, is a trained architect and nearly everything that we do in our company has, it's, uh, has a really very architectural uh, feel to it because I think that when she's <laughs> conceiving of how things should work, it's almost like she's building a building that happens to be furniture. She's, you know, it's, a, it's both building and sculpture all at once, I think, for her. And if you look at these pieces, this is almost cantilevered the way a building, a building would be. The uh, center of this uh, desk actually hangs in between these two vertical elements, the same way that this um, cabinet does. Another thing I want to point out with this is this really very beautiful um, way that this white European oak is treated. We done this in a marquetry pattern, um, but instead of being like a really small marquetry pattern that you'd see in most 19th century or 18th century furniture, we blew this up 
which gives it you know, a more modern appeal. And we've surrounded it with bronze. Um, you might not be able to see so well in this photograph here, but the side of the desk has the same marquetry pattern that the front of this cabinet does. And I think on the next slide here, we have uh, this bronze detail. I just think that, that the autumn week cover color mixed with the bronze just lends for such a warm and, I don't know, library appeal. I can imagine this in you know, a Frank Lloyd Wright library or something. You, you referred to marquetry pattern. Uh, share with our viewers what that is. A marquetry pattern, or just think of a parquet, but <clears throat> similar. Mm -hmm. It just means that you're, you're cutting up the wood veneer and then and reapplying it into a pattern. Wonderful. That's really cool. The, um, of course, in typical bungalow five fashion, you know, our, some of our staple colors are blue and white. And this is our Keenan collection that, you know, marries not only our, um, you know, lacquer and our rattan together, but this is just a very interesting piece. Uh, Luca, tell us about, you know, the thought and like where you would place this. Well, if I were decorating, I would absolutely use this in, uh, you know, a library or a sunroom um, as bedside tables, as in, in tables, as a, a table in a bathroom. I'd use it in a pool house. Um, I think that the cane gives us a lightness and the fact that you can see right through it, um, you know, not on the very top, on the very top there's a panel there, but below that, um, you know, on those two shelves, you'll, you can see right through the cane. Of course, we have glass insert here. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'll try and blow that up in order to make sure that it's strong. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I can see this piece in a lot of different situations. And you're right, coastal, but doesn't need to be used on the coast. <laughs> Could be anywhere in between. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of, you know, Rattan, we, the Aster collection has been, you know, quite well received. Uh, we do, you know, different silhouettes of that. And we have a very unique way of using the, the raffia. And uh, it's used, the way you guys designed it, instead of just kind of um, using it as an overlay or, a, you know, a veneer, we actually, you know, have recessed it and then dressed it up with a you know, substantial piece of hardware. What was the inspiration about this? The inspiration for this would probably be the kind of furniture that, say, Brooke Astor would have used in her library, hence the name, you know, uh -huh. Astor. Not the, you know, the, the red lacquered one in the city, but say, one, another one. Yes. <laughs> um, but I want to uh, point out some tricks that our designer built into these. If you see this piece, it could have been, you know, an overly blocky, almost imposing, overly modern piece. But by adding some interesting elements, by say lifting the base off of the leg, by using this really very elegant tapered leg, and by adding this reveal between the case and the top, I think that she's really succeeded in doing something special and making something that could seem blocky and imposing actually seem really very elegant and refined. And also that, that, that trace, that, that, you know, the shape of those panels, instead of just being regular, um, you know, regular rectangles. They have that special, um, you know, that special cutout for the handle. Also, you know, the, uh, you know, the drawers are, are have the, the you know, undermounted glides, so you're not seeing that sort of drawer hardware on the sides, which makes it feel even more refined. And I also like how the, um, you know, the, the um, raffia here is woven in a, uh, in a chevron pattern. Just gives it a little bit of a, um, I know that this is one of your favorite pieces in the collection. Can you tell me why? It is. Well, I, I love the size. You know, the scale is everything. I think this is something you could use, like, in a powder bath. Um, also, it could be a great bar because of the scale, especially in a small apartment. You and the bars. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> yes. One always, always. Thinking that maybe you drink a lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll never tell. Uh, I love the way that you have married several different pieces from, you know, collections that we've had for a while and with the new things. Um, the Acacia Lamps, that's a, you know, Bungalow 5 staple. And you, be, you will be seeing products throughout this presentation and we'll refer to those later and tell you how to find them. But Luca, I love how you mix the contemporary with the traditional and just kind of brought it all together where some people might be a little bit, you know, afraid of mixing the, you know, the different 
design. Never be, never be afraid to mix. I think the most successful decoration when you go into a home um, <laughs> is the decoration that looks like it's been accumulated over time. So the conceit of this, this picture, or the, say the fantasy, would be that somebody had mid-century modern chairs that maybe they re refinished in, into a black lacquer, that they had this, this uh, you know, uh, almost uh, vaguely colonial uh, raffia, you know, uh, you know, credenza here, as well as, you know, Chinese lamps maybe from mom and a fabulous piece of modern art. Yeah, it's a beautiful collection. They, uh, I, we've used a lot of metals this year in the collection, and the Odeon console is by far the most shallow of all of our consoles. Um, it is in appearance to be very tactile. Uh, share, you know, about the top with us. Well, you know, the Odeon, as well as the next two collections we have here, so we have a set of three different metal uh, pieces, is, you know, the, the finish on this is really very special. And when we first conceived of it, we did this in a completely smooth brass. This is all brass sheet here <clears> on, on this piece. And, um, you know, Marina and I were looking at it and we thought, you know, there's something lacking about this. There's something that just isn't right. Something that we, we feel that we need to take this a step further to really make it uh, beautiful. So what we did was we added this leather-like texture to the broad surfaces and then um, this uh, forged bronze texture to, on the edges. You know, and then another thing we did was we added this shelf on the bottom. Um, and people say, well, you know, we've been asked by you, like, why did you put a shelf and why did you put it there? Of course, you have the option to put the shelf at the top, but it's sometimes nice to leave extra space, say for a stack of books, a sculpture like this, maybe you want to put a vase down there. Because this piece is so narrow at eight inches, um, we didn't really see it necessarily being used with stools underneath it. And we thought that it would be nice to have that extra flexibility for some storage. Yeah, it's really quite lovely in person. Uh, the Marjorelle um, is, you know, you told me that it was inspired by textiles, printed textiles. And I love that, you know, that you are a visionary. And just, I just want to ask a quick question. As you're, you know, traveling about, you know, and you see things. What what do you think is one of the most unique things you've ever looked at an object and thought, oh, you know, that would transfer very well into a finish on one of our Bungalow 5 pieces? I think probably the Paisley pattern that's in the next collection. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about this, uh, the uh, texture on these pieces, and then we'll get there to answer your question, okay? okay. <laughs> so um, we wanted something whimsical. And we wanted something kind of fun and interesting to do on metal. And so, um, you know, we were trying, racking our brains for a way to make this something which would be more interesting. And we thought, you know, let's just, why don't we make a hippie cube? And so we dressed this up with a leaf pattern, a blossom pattern, and a wave pattern, all really pretty abstract, you know, in order to, to come up with the uh, textures on this piece. And before we go to the next piece, I do want to point out the flexibility that we have here uh, with this cube. Because it's 18 by 18, it's ideal as, say, a, a small stool. It's great as a side table. You can use two of them in front of a six-foot sofa. You could use six in front of a seven or eight-foot sofa, or even four or nine if you need a square coffee table, say, in a, in a situation where you have facing sofas or maybe a corner sofa. Absolutely. That, you know, it's nice to have versatility with pieces and, you know, very much like the Hollis table here. So I know we talked about your inspiration with the Paisley. So go, let's elaborate on that inspiration. Okay, this piece right here, um, you know, the Hollis is another piece which is really very 1930s, very, very Jean-Michel Franck, um, thinned out a bit. And it has a really very imposing Mondrian pattern on top of it, Mondrian grid, which I think <clears> is really stunning. But we needed something to soften it. We never want to make something that looks like an actual antique piece of furniture because mm -hmm. we're not in the business of making antique reproductions. We're always trying to make something which is interesting, which is familiar, which can slip into a room with other furniture, but has an element which is uh, adds a little extra spice to it. And for us in this particular collection, that that is that Paisley pattern, which runs all the way across. Of course, it's a it's a subtle pattern, so it's not going to steal the show. It's not going to 
fight with another pattern that you have in the room. But it just adds a bit of interest to the piece. Yeah, and it's here again. I feel a, you know I feel a little Frank Lloyd Wright when I look at this piece. It, it definitely, it would be perfect in a craftsman home. Uh, I could see it in a New York loft. I could even imagine it, say, in a California modern in Bel Air or or not in Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, and I actually imagine it as you know being a bench. I mean, you know, yes, I know you could you could definitely table. sit on that. Yeah. And as you see by like, here, we have this in, in multiple, so you definitely can use more than one if you want a larger uh, coffee table situation. Mm -hmm. Well, the Kelsey collection uh, that we have up on the screen right now, it kind of mixes three different materials. We've got, you know, wood, metal, and raffia. And I know you can't really see on the screen here, but this piece has a, it's very, has some great drawers and shelves inside. But um, Luke, I know that you really like this piece and for its versatility. So kind of walk us through what you see and how you see this being used. I think one of the buzzwords that you're seeing um, about furniture and, <clears throat> the, and what people expect out of their furniture during COVID-19 when people are being stuck at home is that they're looking for furniture which is multifunction. Mm -hmm. And I think this fits the bill. Behind these cane doors, which is breathable, by the way, are a set of drawers mm -hmm. as well as shelves. And so this piece could be a piece that you're using in your dining room slash library slash living room slash playroom slash baby's room, or, you know, even <laughs> in, you know, a bedroom slash whatever, rumpus room, um, because you can store so many things in it and because um, you know, you can use those shelves for, say, sweaters and then, you know, the top drawers for remotes and the bottom drawers for maybe like, you know, unmentionables or whatever or what have you. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know as being head of design for Bungalow 5, you know, you scour the world for, you know, the finest artisans. And I think one of the best examples of, you know, really good craftsmanship is the huge chair here. And I know you're particularly excited. And so share us about the finish and how we it bring are able to bring out the, the beauty with this well i'm design direction which really informs you know finishes and overall look but actually our head of design is marina lanina and this is also from her brainchild um we wanted something which was really very sculptural and in fact when she first designed this chair she did it in in metal and she imagined it in metal with a leather sling um, one of the reasons why a chair like this has to be done in cast metal is because of uh, the thin um, elements that are, are on here. Like these aren't thick, bulky, um, you know, pieces of wood. They're actually really very thin. And so strength is an issue. Um, but we were actually able to um, achieve uh, strength in this chair by inserting very cleverly and stealthily a hidden metal frame in here. Um, there's a lot going on in here, on the, a lot going on on this chair. I do want to also point out that the wood is mahogany. It's Cape Lilac mahogany, but in order to give it this really naughty appearance, um, we actually hand carved all of these elements and then wire brushed it on top of that. And then after that, stained it and then cherused it and apply the double layer of cane for the seat and back. So it's not only is it, you know, beautiful and sculptural, but it's also extremely strong. Right. It's just, here again, it's the attention and the details that we have at Bungalow 5. And uh, you see these two chairs in this, you know, what appears to be a formal setting. And I, you know, see them as a very curated piece. However, you refer to them as? Sculpture. Absolutely. Uh, that you can sit in. Chairs are very difficult to design because not only do they have to look good, but they have to be somewhat comfortable and they have to be able to support a person. I know that when Marina was working on this chair, she uh, printed out scale models of this, uh, you know, on a, a, on a 3D printer mm -hmm. just to make sure that we got everything right. Yeah, they're really beautiful. And then, you know, we always have the, those type people talk about throwback Thursdays. So we're going to throw it back to, uh, you know, the 70s, which I know was a really favorite period of time for you, Luca. And our, our Emile collection has been very successful thus far. Um, we have it in the showrooms. And I love the fact that the edges are just so soft. 
and I know that you're extremely excited about this. So I'm going to let you walk everybody through. I'm extremely excited about it. In fact, I personally have um, a pair of Emil side tables and an Emil Etager. So full disclosure. <laughs> you know, the 70s, you know, you can say the 70s, there were some design disasters in the 70s, right? But also there was a lot of great design in the 70s. And I think that this is a 70s interpretation of 30s furniture. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what we've done to make it more modern is to give it a new dress by covering this in a pearl. Probably normally in the 70s, you would have seen this in like a beige or say makeup colored lacquer or mauve or something like that. And um, the bases would have been um, you know, really shiny brass. Um, what we did was we <clears throat> made this a brushed brass and um, also you know, used the burl like I mentioned before in order to, to, to calm it down and give it an air of formality. If you look at the, the, the color of the metal and you compare that with the color of the veneer, you can see that the, the brass elements you know, they, they just sort of whisper luxury. They don't need to scream it. Yeah. I, mean, I think you can see this here on this table um, where we actually shot it in the, in the showroom. You can see that, you know, how beautiful and warm this all looks together. And also you can see how there's not one uh, straight corner on this. Everything is curved. You know, it's just, there's something very, you know, sexy and very female about these curves that just, I don't know, that mm -hmm. just make this piece something that you want to touch and have as far as I'm concerned. I, I think this whole collection could be, you know, be used in a commercial or a residential application. True. Most of our furniture can be adapted to um, heavy use commercial applications, but that's something that generally our sales reps and salespeople um, come back and inquire what the production with, because if, if there are any specific needs that need to be tweaked for that, we're, we're able to do that in most cases. Absolutely. And then I know that we have a question and Kelsey from Kansas City wants to know what your favorite piece of the entire 2020 collection is. Tyler, that's really very difficult um, because I can see using things in so many different situations. Um, you know, there's something really very special about the Canaan to me. <clears throat> because I like the the uh, that really like light rattan, um, you know, mixed with those thin vertical members. Let me go back here right quick. Um, I just love how they work together, and I feel that this piece almost floats. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might not be the most exciting piece we've ever made, but I just feel like it can, it can slip into almost anywhere, and I think it just has an overall like lightness and airiness. Um, uh, you know that you don't see much today. Yeah. It's real. I mean, everything in the collection is, is really beautiful. I've, and also the huge chair. I mean, I have to say that I think that Marina really knocked it out of the park with this. It was, it was I almost couldn't believe it when we actually mm -hmm. first saw it because I thought it was you know going to be such an impossibility to design, to actually manufacture something like that. Sometimes you can design the, the greatest thing ever, but the actual, you know, manufacturing part of it can be really very difficult, not to mention to, you know, make many pieces to sell. Yeah, uh, we have one more question. Mark from Seattle wants to know, will there be any different uh, thought processes uh, considering COVID with future design of furniture? Oh, you know, I think that, um, I mentioned before when we were talking about uh, which collection was it, I think it was the um, Kelsey, that COVID uh, forces us to think about multifunction. Um, because I think that we're going to see, at least for the short term, that we're spending more time at home. And so the pieces that we have need to be able to perform, um, actually perform. They can't just be decorative. That We actually have to use them. Um, so I think that they need to be not only functional, but also beautiful and useful. Yes, absolutely. Well, Luca, I want to thank you so much for, you know, sharing your insight with the 2020 collection and kind of really you know, helping, you know, lift the mood and the spirit of everybody that's out there. And if you have any questions about any of the pieces that you see today, contact your local sales rep or one of our Bungalow 5 showrooms or at our website, bungalow5.com or 
if you have questions, info at bungalow5.com. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks.